Hey there, my name is Wyatt from the Northwood Stewardship Center. Welcome to Wonders of Woods and Water, a video series where we'll be sharing a little bit about um, of the different wonders you can find in the forests and water bodies in your area. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about macroinvertebrates, which are also commonly known as just water bugs. And macroinvertebrates are great indicators of water quality because there are many species that can exist and survive at different levels of water quality. So first, let's break down the word macroinvertebrate. Macro, the beginning short part of the word, means that these creatures can be seen by the human eye without using tools like a microscope. The second part of the word, invertebrate, means that these creatures don't have a backbone like we do. Now if you put it all together you've got macroinvertebrate and there are some really cool macroinvertebrates you can find in ecos aquatic ecosystems like streams and ponds. Some examples of these are dragonflies, caddisflies, stoneflies, and different water beetles, which I'll be talking about a little bit today. I'll be talking about macroinvertebrates in two aquatic ecosystems, a pond and a stream. So first up, we have a caddisfly, which is probably most notable for the case that it makes around its body in its larval stage. Now, the case they make out of silk, um, and they use this silk, which is really sticky, to attach a bunch of different particles that are in the stream water. These particles can be anything from small bits of gravel to little parts of leaves and sticks. Um, but it's really, really cool because they build it up around their body like a sleeping bag. And over here, I've got a great example of one that is attached to a rock. And this is where you can typically find caddisfly larva cases, larva and their cases, is underneath rocks in a stream. And as you can see from that one, there are different little pebbles and leaves um, all attached together and attached to the rock. And so caddisflies spend most of their life in this larval stage in these cases, which is about one to up to three years before they molt, which means they change into their adult stage, um, which is when they fly around and mate. Um, and that stage can last for up to three weeks before they lay eggs again and die. So really cool. Another really cool macroinvertebrate is a stonefly. Stoneflies are equally as interesting, but they don't spend um, their life in a case in their larval stage. They actually crawl around on rocks. So similarly, you can also find stonefly larvae on rocks that are submerged in a stream. But stoneflies are cool. Um, because they, as larvae, are sometimes herbivores, but many species um, hunt down other aquatic insects. And similarly to a caddisfly, they also spend most of their life in the larval stage, about you know up to up to three years. And then, when they molt into adults, they they also spend only about three weeks in the adult stage um, before they lay eggs again and die. And stoneflies are indicators of excellent water quality, which means on the other side that they are very sensitive to pollution. So if you had a dirty polluted stream nearby, you probably wouldn't find stoneflies or caddisflies. Now we're at the pond ecosystem and a couple of ma macroinvertebrates I'd like to tell you a little bit about are one, a dragonfly, and two, a water boatman. 
So first, the dragonfly is a macroinvertebrate that I'm sure you've seen flying around in the air in their adult stage. But like some of the other macroinvertebrates I've been talking about, they also spend most of their life in the water in their larval stage. So when they morph and molt into adults, that's when they are in their adult stage flying around. Um, but when they're in their larval stage, they can spend up to five years underwater and they like to burrow themselves in the mud. In their larval stage and when they're adults, dragonflies are predatory, which means that they hunt and feed on other macroinvertebrate organisms um, in the water, and then when they're flying around in the air, they can catch insects like flies and mosquitoes and other critters that we really don't like. So they're, they're awesome. Dragonflies are also an indicator of good water quality, which means that they're relatively intolerant to pollution. So that's another good indicator to keep, keep lookout for. Um, you can usually find dragonfly nymphs or dragonfly larvae when they're burrowed in the mud in shallow water of ponds and lakes. Now, for an example, we have a dragonfly larva right here. And as you can see, it's got some, some fuzz on it a little bit, um, probably from hanging out in the mud. Um, so that's a good example right there if you're ever looking around for one. Um, and I like to use something like a pasta colander or some sort of kitchen strainer to search for dragonfly larva and other macroinvertebrates uh, because it's great to scoop out the mud and then filter out the mud with the water as you sift it down. You can also take a little net if you have one to look for, for other macroinvertebrates. So next up we've got a water boatman. Now I don't have an example of a water boatman here but that's okay. Water boatmen are aquatic beetles and unlike similar species, they are not predatory. So that means that they eat aquatic, um, aquatic plants um, and other things that are not other macroinvertebrates. Um, one really cool thing about water boatmen is that they have four legs, but their hind legs act sort of like oars or paddles. So when they're swimming, you can see them propelling themselves through the water with those legs and it looks and it looks really cool um, they also have some really cool mouth parts and this will sound kind of weird but one of their mouth parts is a straw like structure and when they're feeding on plant material they can inject enzymes which are these molecules that help break down the food for the water boatman so they can inject enzymes using the straw and then they can slurp up the contents just like a smoothie. Imagine being a water boatman slurping up your favorite banana smoothie. Mm -mm. So while water boatmen do not prey on other creatures, they actually have predators themselves. And one exa an example of that are amphibians like salamanders. So that'll wrap it up for today. And in conclusion, your task at home is to find and identify three different macroinvertebrates at two different streams or ponds so you can compare the water quality. And I didn't mention this um, just before, but the water boatmen are um, good indicators of poor water quality, which means that they are relatively tolerant to pollution. So in your assignment, if you can compare the macroinvertebrates you find at one stream or pond to the other stream or pond, then you can get a good sense um, if there are any differences in water quality between the two. And if you follow the links below, you'll be able to see a scale of water quality based on macroinvertebrates and their tolerance or intolerance of pollution. Thank you so much. Stay safe and stay tuned for more, more videos to come.